like worried or something like that. I don't. It just will never be there. No, no. This was too good. This uh, this sounded way too good. Hey, dude, <laughs> that's scary. Yeah, yeah, that is. That is scary, man. AI. The rise of AI music is stirring controversy as internet users experiment with generating fake songs using AI models of famous artists, some of which are deemed to be more impressive than actual projects these artists drop. And while some are hailing it as the future of music production, others argue that it is a threat to the authenticity and creativity of real musicians. Fuck AI music. But the question is, is the guilty pleasure of AI blurring the lines between creative innovation and ethical concerns? Now, before we delve into the world of AI today, let's take a look at the early use of AI in music. Artificial intelligence in music have a long and intertwined history that dates back to the mid 20th century. One of the earliest examples of AI music was the development of computer generated music in the 1950s and the 1960s. This was a pioneering field that explored the possibilities of using computers to create and manipulate sounds, as well as to compose music based on rules and algorithms. One of the most influential figures in the field was Max Matthews, an American engineer and computer scientist who was widely regarded as the father of computer music. He developed a series of programs called Music 1 to Music 5, which allowed users to synthesize and manipulate sounds using digital signal processing techniques. Do you know Deacon Newland? Uh, she was a pianist, but uh, not all the stuff she played was very good. And at the intermission, we, uh, John, we sort of looked at each other. I don't know who said it. John said, the computer could do better than this. Why don't you write a program? So uh, I went away and wrote Music 1, which did not do better than that, but um, which was a beginning. Music 4 was used to create some of the first ever computer-generated music pieces in 1961, called Daisy Bell. And if you ever scroll on TikTok enough, you would be familiar with this one. The early developments in computer-generated music set the stage for later innovations in AI and music. One such innovation is Experiments in Musical Intelligence, also known as EMI, a program created and founded by David Cope in 1983. So I consulted with them and they, they all came to the same agreeable kind of advice, which was essentially, why don't you, um, you know, since you can program, why don't you write a program that will create your music for you? I thought that was a very good idea. Emmy uses artificial intelligence to analyze and create music by deconstructing compositions, analyzing them, and separating them into parts. The program then determines patterns and signatures in the work that signify the piece's style and recombines the various pieces into new patterns without replicating anything exactly. The first notes of a computer-made song echoed through the industry, signaling a new era of music. And much like the haunting melody of Daisy Bell, AI music has continued to evolve, both captivating and chilling audiences with its endless possibilities. Nowadays, the use of AI in the music industry can be broadly categorized into two areas those that benefit musicians directly, and those that benefit music streaming and distribution platforms. Let's start with the distribution platforms. Streaming companies have been harnessing AI for a few years already, using the tech to set up custom recommendations, new track suggestions, and also create personalized playlists. Spotify's algorithmic playlists are one of the features that make the music streaming service popular among listeners. These playlists use artificial intelligence to analyze the user's listening history and activity, and then suggest songs that match their preferences and moods. One of the YouTubers who has explored this topic in depth is Maddie Balls, 
in which he mentioned how Spotify was misrepresenting its monitoring of editorial playlists, claiming that it's mostly monitored by humans and is partially algorithm-based. While the truth is, the whole editorial playlists are algorithm-based. What do you think the significance of these editorial playlists being algorithmic is rather than them actually being listened to by uh, real humans? Positives first is that um, because it's an algorithm, you don't have to go through any kind of gatekeeper. You don't have to know somebody over at Spotify in order to get on one of these playlists. You just have to do your due diligence and you know get your music out there to the right people, the right audiences, and then eventually Spotify will reward you. But the negatives is like what we came across, the situation where you know something is wrong and even though everything in the system works and it sounds like this is a great song to push out to people on this playlist something's wrong with it and the ai didn't pick up on it moving on to musicians the use of ai in the music industry can be seen as an iceberg of ai tools with different levels of controversy and impact at the surface, there are tools that help musicians with tasks such as mastering, stem separation, music analysis, and voice manipulation. These tools are widely accepted and used by many artists, as they can enhance the quality and efficiency of their work. Moving a little lower, we can find tools like UberDuck. UberDuck is a web-based application that allows users to create voice clips of celebrities, fictional characters, and other famous voices. UberDuck uses deep learning models to synthesize speech from text input based on the voice style of the selected speaker. However, UberDuck has also faced some controversy regarding the ethical and legal implications of copying voices without consent. Some critics have argued that UberDuck violates the right of publicity and the right of privacy of these original voice owners, and that it could potentially be used for malicious purposes such as identity theft, fraud, or defamation. Moreover, some voice actors and celebrities have expressed their displeasure with UberDuck, claiming that it undermines their work and talent. Well, okay, but what about the music industry? Well, UberDuck has not necessarily caused much uproar in the music scene, and that's because its synthesized voices are not very convincing or realistic. I say, uh... Although UberDuck can mimic the tone and accent of singers, it cannot reproduce the nuances and emotions that make music expressive and unique. Therefore, most musicians and listeners did not consider UberDuck a threat or a substitute for human singers, but rather a novelty or a parody tool. And let's just say that didn't last for too long. As technology advanced and more sophisticated AI tools were developed, concerns about the potential threat posed by AI to the music industry began to emerge. In 2022, two best friends, ex-Google machine learning engineer and ex-Palantir deployment strategist, founded Eleven Labs, a cutting-edge browser-based text-to-speech software with a crazy feature that allows you to upload at least a one-minute audio recording of anybody and use it as a text-to-speech voice. And it is insanely accurate. It was basically a super advanced version of UberDuck, allowing you to clone any voice you want with the choice to adjust the stability and clarity of your voice input. Uh, this is an AI version of Andrew Tate. Whatever you hear me say is not said by the real Andrew Tate. Subscribe to Aura Dies, though. Let's talk about what you can do if you're a bad actor and there's someone you don't like. You know, let's say, there's a celebrity you don't like, you could take a voice sample of them, plug it into this program, and write up some horrible shit and post it online, claim it's a leak. A leak. Let's take this word and incorporate it into the world of music. Recently, streamer Aiden Ross leaked Travis Scott's unreleased verse on Rockstar Made by Playboy Cardi in one of his streams. Yo, what's good? Yo, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Yo, what's good, bro? My bad, man. Are you serious? Nah. I thought it was leaked. I don't fucking watch this shit for two seconds and you start leaking shit. Where'd you even get it? I didn't fucking send you that. Um, I thought it was leaked. Uh... And while some people thought that he genuinely forgot or that it was one of his usual publicity stunts, one portion of people mentioned something different and interesting. This is AI generated. Now thinking about it, people's doubt of the authenticity of an artist's voice in a song was beginning to rise. And this is due to the birth of the most trending AI technology in the music scene right now. Sovitz SVC. 
yet another groundbreaking tool made by a team of developers and contributors mainly from China, Japan, and potentially other countries. SVC stands for Soft Voice Conversion, which pretty much explains what this tool is capable of. All you need is on one hand a trained model with a dataset, and on the other hand, a voice input or audio recording. You feed these into the AI, and just like that, you have an AI Travis Scott. For you I die again. For you I die again. By this point, it is very important to acknowledge that whenever a technology becomes widely available, there will always be both positive and negative ways in which it is used. On the positive side, it can be argued that musicians may use AI technology for non-commercial purposes such as experimentation and creative exploration with proper attribution or compensation for the original artist and without negatively impacting their reputation. But doing all of what I just mentioned may just not be enough when it comes to cloning another human's being voice, ethically speaking. And I know morality is such a subjective topic and so relative that each one of us will have their own opinion. But let's just take a look at what's happening with the recent trend of AI songs and covers. This tweet by Roberto Nixon was the first big announcement of this AI technology. You might notice that I sound like Kanye West. No, Yeezy didn't record a voiceover for me for this video. I didn't learn how to do impressions. This is AI. So let me come back to my original voice for a second because this is crazy. Easy, Kanye, Wheezy, Southside of Chicago, life ain't easy. All praise be to Lord Jesus, Donda, please rest easy. All praise be to Lord Jesus, Donda, please rest easy. It left everyone in awe, mesmerized, shocked, and also outraged. Outraged for using an AI voice clone of Kanye West to mention Donda. Pretty spooky stuff, and I think it's understandable. A lot of people on Twitter were pretty unsettled by it. And I, I also agree with quite a few people on Twitter that pointed out that it's pretty diabolical to put a bar about Ye's deceased mother in here and then have AI Ye rap it for you. I think that's pretty weird. So Roberto decided to make a video addressing his points, his thoughts on AI and pretty much responding to everyone. And Moist Critical, who's this big YouTuber, he actually just made a video on, on my piece of content. So I wanted to address it too, because it did bother me because I do feel that I made a bit of a mistake, um, was that people were like, oh, he used somebody else's voice to shout out his dead mom on the track. Cause I, I had a, I had a lyric about Donda in there. That one, I had to take full responsibility for it. Like, I feel terrible for that because my, it was like, it was coming from a place of deep, deep love and respect, you know, like shouting out Donda. Like I love my mom. I know, I know the impact that she's had on my life and like the same impact, you know, sort of like that Donda had in Kanye's life, at least from what I know from the documentary, you know, in retrospect, I was like, okay, I think I understand why a lot of people would think that's weird. I felt terrible for that. So I want to own up to that. Otherwise, I actually think there's a lot more bad than good here. Um, good, you know, like say some of our, you know, say a, a posthumous album from Tupac, John Lennon, Kurt Cobain, like all these artists that have passed, you know, Mag Miller, Pop Smoke, etc. If their estates are willing, you know, they could use this to generate more music. I, I'm not even sure if that's a good or a bad thing. It, it's going to be coming, though, that's for sure. Um, but But there's actually not that many use cases that I find, quote unquote, good. Right. I think this will be more weaponized than anything else. Um, unbelievable, man. Like the amount of hatred on the Internet, like some of these death threats, they're not just like, I, I hope you die. It's like they go into detail about how they want to eliminate me, which is a little unsettling. Um, so in his own words, he is just pointing out an opportunity for artists to take advantage of the situation because it's inevitable. The tech is coming and coming fast, which again was the point of the video to give folks the heads up. He made a video showcasing this AI tool, not realizing that some people might focus on trying it out rather than understanding the risks of it. It's like he unintentionally gave people an invitation to one, make popular songs covered by popular artists, and two, create an unofficial songs of popular artists without thinking about how harmful it could be. But again, this is assuming that his intentions were pure, as he's mentioned but let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. And as this tweet gained more popularity, the trend began. Thousands of AI songs and covers made using Soviet's SVC went off on YouTube, 
TikTok, Instagram reels, and hip hop pages. And people were shocked and unsettled to hear how accurate these songs are to their real voice owners. And even worse, people started training AI models of artists that have passed away. The likes of Juice World, XXXTentacion, Pop Smoke, Tupac, and many more to be trained till this day to be more and more accurate. And with these models available to the public, well, you already know. AI Juice World covers, X covers, and even entire made up songs were shared on platforms, some leaving you with an eerie realization that no matter how accurate the emotions or style or theme projected in those songs, it was not the original artist's decision and simply will never be. On the other hand, you'd see things that are straight disrespectful to the deceased artist and to their audience. For instance, Instagram hip hop page Bars posted a Pop Smoke AI cover of Ice Spice's viral song, Munch. But let's just say people did not like this. Before I was feeling you now, that nigga I'm munch. Nigga I eat it, he ate it for lunch. Miss on my body, I get what I want like. Before I was feeling you now, feeling you now. That nigga I'm munch. Nigga I eat it, he ate it for lunch. Miss on my body, I get what I want like. Drake's AI model was also used to cover the same song, and of course, Drake himself caught attention to it as he stated on one of his IG stories, "This is the final straw, AI." By saying that, he refers to Universal Music Group or UMG asking streaming services to block AI companies from accessing their songs. Universal Music Group, the parent label that controls one third of the global recorded music market, is asking streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music to stop AI companies from using the label's copyrighted songs to train their machines. UMG's clear responsibility was to work to prevent the unauthorized use of their music and to stop platforms from ingesting content that violates the rights of artists and other creators. Now the question is, are big labels considering the possibility of a strategic turnaround? This AI technology, uh, one of my bigger viewpoints of it all is that all the people who claim they were ghostwriters, y'all better take advantage. YouTuber, streamer, and rapper Amdante mentioned an interesting point about the potential use of AI voice conversion and model training by labels especially on artists who have passed away. So it's already to the point where we don't even need these artists here. If I want a certain Juice World song, I'm just gonna make it myself. Like who, who the fuck cares? Like we don't need him anymore. I got the AI to do it. That's what it's coming to. And that's what it's gonna continue to come to. And labels are gonna notice that, all right? They're gonna act like, oh, this is wrong. Well, I don't like this, da da da. We're gonna, we're gonna put a stop to this. Meanwhile, low key, once these, once their artist dies, um, and they're the they were the cash cow. They're just gonna they're just gonna, you know, make the music themselves. Now, as technology continues to advance, it appears that people are becoming less emotionally invested. Instead of connecting with the artist as a human being through their music, listeners are increasingly treating the artist as a product to be consumed and used for their own purposes. On the other hand, Popular artists are feeling more pressure to release their tracks or albums as soon as possible before the internet consumes the alternative. But with that being said, will AI kill music? I don't think so. Lazy musicians may become lazier and rely solely on AI tools, but creative artists will utilize these tools to enhance their creativity, and they will do so ethically and within legal boundaries without compromising anyone's privacy. I mean, who would have thought that a creepy computer Daisy Bell song would evolve into the idea of making anything you want with anyone's voice so accurately? What happens as underground musicians carry on pushing this trend, creating more and more AI songs and covers? And will the allure of AI music and singing voice conversion shed its guilty connotations and simply become a mainstream pleasure? Well, I don't have those answers, but... We'll see what's about to happen next, okay? 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 We'll see what's about to happen next, okay? 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 We'll see what's about to happen. Hey, hey, we'll see what's about to happen. Hey, hey, we'll see what's about to happen. Now, if you made it to this point in the video, I, I do make music. I've recently released Inner Cloud. It's an album that is so versatile, you'll hear every genre on earth. I'm just kidding, you won't. But it's a very condensed 30 minute um, album. So if you want to check it out, I really appreciate it. But yeah, other than that, like, subscribe and peace. Bye. See ya. Fuck, dude.